So summing up briefly, how do you look back now on your presidency? What do you see as its most significant achievements and where do you wish you could have done more? Well, I, I think uh, I look back on the presidency and think about the support I had from the council and particularly the, the group that was with me on the executive of council. Uh, the president is not elected by the fellows at large. The president is elected by the council and his, his or her support comes from the council. So I think uh, one of the things that I, I remember and I, I will remember for a long time is the degree of support I had throughout my time on council but particularly in the presidency from the other councillors that were part of the council. I think all of the, all of the areas that we've mentioned are all works in progress. Um, I think even the branding exercise which is obviously I'm very pleased with that and it, was, it, it is completed will only be valid for a period of time and um, probably in five years or seven years or some other period of time it will need to be reviewed and revisited. So even the things which are complete are in fact only complete for a time. Almost all of the other things we've talked about, um, our international relationships and, and our relationships with colleges, with uh, specialty societies are all works in progress and I've got no doubt that the, the council that is now in place has got the energy and enthusiasm and the will to address all of those in a, crea in a con constructive way. Finally, during your presidency, the college and the profession lost someone you regard as a giant and a profound influence on surgery in both Australia and New Zealand. I speak of Rowan Nix. Rowan Nix was a, a fantastic surgeon and a fantastic benefactor to the college. It means a particular amount to he He's always meant a lot to me because, of course, his roots were in Auckland and he worked with the Green Lane Surgical Unit in those heady days in the 50s when they were doing things for the first time and very successfully, uh, open heart surgery, uh, arrested hearts, cold, cold, um, cardioplegia, doing the original coronary bypasses, some of that sort of work which was just groundbreaking work. And in the, every day when I go to work, I, I walk past a, a picture of him on the wall from, from the early 50s as part of that unit. But after, in his later life, when he retired, he retained an absolute interest in surgery, about third world surgeons and about what Australia and New Zealand could offer to those outside uh, our, our shores. And he has been a huge benefactor to the college for its work in relating to surgery in places such as Africa, India, um, Thailand, Indonesia, etc. And uh, it, I mean, he, he survived to a good age and, uh, and it was obviously uh, sad that he's gone but his work uh, was fantastic and I was, uh, I was very privileged to be able to be present at his funeral uh, and say a few words on behalf of the college. A powerful role model for surgeons. Absolutely. Not only a role model during his life as a surgeon but throughout his life.